What's up EFD squad and welcome back to a long awaited episode of One on One. But first we must address one issue. You may have noticed that over the last few weeks, Football Mundial hasn't been on your screens. It wasn't a decision that me and Zach took lightly, but we have decided that the Strand wasn't serving the FD community like it used to, and we needed to make something more engaging for you and also something that we can get our teeth into on this end. Originally, we wanted to do Football Mundial 2.0, where we went more in depth into a specific story or a situation or a player or a team, but then we thought, We've already done a couple of videos a bit like that on EFD. Those two one-off videos by Chris and Pat on Brexit and expected goals. So instead, we've decided to bring a bit of Football Mundial into the one-on-one -on -one concept and put out a video every two weeks for you at home. This also means you'll be seeing some other familiar faces too. So on that note, we're kicking off the first week of this new series with an in-depth look at a subject we've touched upon in Football Mundial before. The mess that is Greek football today. But before we get started, if you haven't already, please subscribe to EFD for some more wonderful videos, such as the one you're about to witness. The glory is. The last 20 years of football in Greece have been tumultuous to say the least, so let's start towards the beginning of this period in 2004. The alleged birthplace of democracy and sport had never really touched modern football in a meaningful way, with no Greek team having reached a European final aside from Panathinaikos, who did so in 1971, but were torn apart by the Ajax of Michels and Cruyff. But that all changed that fateful summer. Greece qualified for the European Championships for the first time in 24 years and for just the second time in their history, and against all odds won the competition, beating host Portugal in the tournament opener and in the final. It was an all-time high for the sport in the country and sent shockwaves throughout European football, although I was still reeling from England's heartbreaking penalty shootout loss to Portugal in the quarterfinals. Nevertheless, it kicked off what was a period of relative success for Greek club football. That winter, Olympiakos came within seconds of knocking eventual champions Liverpool out of the Champions League and would also welcome the likes of Rivaldo and Yaya Torre to Athens during this time. But in 2008, the banks collapsed, causing a worldwide economic crisis, with Greece soon becoming Europe's biggest victim. It would have terrible ramifications for the sport in the country, with bankruptcy, corruption and violence on and off the pitch marring the sport over the last 10 years. But unfortunately, this is nothing new in Greek football. In fact, when I started researching this, I thought the economic crisis was a cause of all of this, but violence, extremist politics and corruption have been deep-rooted in the Greek game for a long time now. So first, let's cast our minds back 20 years. But before we do that, I do have to warn you that there are some very heavy subjects about to be discussed. So if you do want to keep watching, please brace yourselves. There's a riot going on. An often heard expression aired by ignorant people on football Twitter is politics has no place in football. And while we'd probably love a world where this is true, it quite simply isn't. And you only have to scratch the surface of the sport in Greece to realise how intrinsically linked politics and football are in the country. And while fan culture in the southeastern European state is world famous and clearly has a lot of positives, it has also witnessed some awful tragedies. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, Greek football and extremist politics were starting to mix in a bloody fashion, typified by the events of October 1999, when Albania travelled across the border to play a Euro qualifier with Greece. A group of visiting fans burned the Greek national flag during the game, and it provoked a sickening response. For the following 16 days, immigrants across the country were subject to attacks, and this sadly culminated in two innocent people being shot dead by Pantelis Kasakos, a member of the far-right political party Golden Dawn. The extremist group then used the flag-burning incident as a springboard to drum up support within football fan communities in the country. The move was partly inspired by Arkan, the Serbian paramilitary leader who employed young Red Star Belgrade ultras to fight under him during the Yugoslav Wars. And his cause struck a chord with many disaffected football fans in Greece, and in particular the hardcore support of Olympiakos, who shared his nationalist ideals. The result of this was the formation of the Galatia Stratia, aka the Blue Army, a nationalist ultra group who made themselves known in 2001 when they protested Greece and Turkey's joint bid to host Euro 2008 outside the Greek Football Federation, allegedly bearing Nazi paraphernalia and burning Turkish flags. And in 2004, things got ugly again. Exactly two months after the national team's underdog glory in Portugal, they played Albania in another qualifier and lost 2-1. 
In retaliation to this somewhat humiliating defeat, 12 members of the Blue Army took to Omonia Square in Athens and set fire to cars carrying Albanian passengers, and 20-year-old Albanian student Gramos Pelushi was murdered on the island of Zakynthos. This led to counter-protests across the country and multiple clashes with the police. Worryingly, support for Golden Dawn had grown massively within the forces by this point, with 50% of the police alleged to support the extremist party. And sadly, this kind of violence was not even limited to matters surrounding the national team. As you probably know, Olympiakos and Panathinaikos share one of Europe's fiercest rivalries, and in 2007, the entire Greek top flight was suspended for nearly a month after yet another horrific incident, this time between fans of the two Greek superclubs. That March, just two months before Athens was set to host the Champions League final, 500 Olympiakos and Panathinaikos ultras met for a pre-arranged fight in the suburb of Paiania. They were armed with knives, baseball bats, flare guns, petrol bombs and even stun grenades. Michalis Philopoulos, a 22-year-old Panathinaikos fan who was a member of the club's anti-fascist Gate 13 Ultra group, was stabbed to death during the melee, leading to multiple arrests, including people who were actually employed by Olympiakos. Not only were sporting events throughout the country put on hold, but the government also imposed a blanket ban on away supporters and dissolved all 250 official supporters' clubs. But as extreme as these measures were, they didn't get to the bottom of the issue, which in many people's eyes was corruption. And the decision to stop fan activity entirely clearly didn't have a radical effect, as in 2008, there were 325 separate incidents of fan violence between rival Athenian clubs. And that winter, something even more shocking happened. On the evening of December the 6th, 2008, Alexis Grigoropoulos, a 15-year-old Panathinaikos fan, got into an argument with a policeman who then got out of his car and shot him dead. For many, this was the final straw. Grigoropoulos was a beloved member of the club, known to volunteer in helping the homeless in the city, and his murder was seen as the embodiment of a corrupt political system which needed to change. And the response to this was sizable to say the least. It sparked Europe's biggest political riot in 40 years as football fans from all clubs joined forces to take to the streets for 19 consecutive nights, along with many other disgruntled and angry Athenians. These protests quickly spread to other cities in Greece and all over the world, and triggered years of unrest as the country's economy plummeted following the 2008 crash and the EU austerity measures which followed not long after. However, the unity shown between rival fans during those 19 evenings may have also had a positive effect. Since 2013, reports of violence between fans of rival clubs have become less frequent. It's just sad that it took such a tragedy for this to happen. But from this, it's clear that in Greece, politics not only has a big role to play in football, but football has a huge role to play in politics. Power, corruption and lies. Moving away from fan violence, the last 10 years in Greek football have been far more defined by the wrongdoings of those holding power in the sport. And of course, we can't ignore the economic crisis either, which has clearly had a devastating effect on the Super League. Not only have big clubs like Panathinaikos and AEK Athens come to the brink of extinction, by the end of the 2016-17 season, average attendances at games had dropped to less than 5,000, which represented a 12% drop from five years earlier. But there is perhaps another reason why fans are reluctant to attend games. They simply don't trust what they are seeing on the pitch. In 2011, 85 people, including players, refs, agents, and two club presidents, were implicated in a match-fixing scandal, with the most notable figure being Olympiakos owner, Evangelos Maranakis, who you may also know as the owner of Nottingham Forest. Many fans would have already been suspicious, as a similar investigation back in 2002 had coincided with the reign of Vasilis Gagatsis as the head of the Greek Football Federation, and the beginning of an era where Olympiakos won 18 of 20 Super League titles. Anyway, fast forward to March 2018, and the corruption investigation finally got some results, with 58 people given prison sentences. However, Evangelos Maranakis walked free despite being banned from football activities three years earlier after being charged with directing a criminal organisation and blowing up a bakery owned by a referee on top of match fixing. He was then accused of drug trafficking just weeks later. Not a great year for him. But as the guilty parties were being put behind bars, yet another crisis had hit the Greek Super League. In a game against AEK Athens, Pauk president Ivan Savidis stormed the pitch carrying a gun, yes that's right, to remonstrate with the referee, which led to the suspension of the league for a month and threats from FIFA to ban Greece from international football entirely. 
And despite the initial downturn, fan violence has also reared its ugly head. In November of last year, AEK Athens Ultras threw a petrol bomb into the away stand during a Champions League clash with Ajax, and the club has since been handed a suspended two-year ban from European competition. And unfortunately, Greek football's link with radical politics has also been in the public eye of late too. Violence during the Greek Cup final last year was allegedly sparked by tension between Syriza supporting AEK fans and Golden Dawn activists among the PAOK support. For context, Syriza are the radical left-wing party who currently form the Greek government. And on top of this, the tragic murder of anti-fascist rapper and Olympiakos fan Pavlos Fisas back in 2013 has led to a five-year investigation which has now turned into a full-on trial against the aforementioned Golden Dawn. So it's probably fair to say that there are a lot of questions that Greece still needs to answer on a number of issues surrounding football and the wider world around it before people are ready to move on. So thanks for bearing with me on that and I must say we were only scratching the surface there covering 20 years of history as well. There is plenty of material out there if you want to have a deeper look into these issues and who knows, maybe we can do a part two some point in the future. But what should we cover next? There are lots of possibilities here, leagues, players that you want us to talk about more, other issues surrounding the wider world of football. Let us know in the comments below and on Twitter and hopefully we can get around to covering it. And as always, if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to hit that like button down there and subscribe to the channel for other shows like Continental Club and Stat Wars. See you next time.